Hi, this is Steve Garland, head wrestling coach at the University of Virginia, getting my weekly video newsletter. Uh, well, geez, that's just uh, that's habit. Uh, I'm giving my update from the NCAA tournament. Sorry, it's been a long, 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 long few days. Um, so, <clears throat> let's start with the positive. Nick Solzer, uh, just uh, kept an amazing comeback day for him. Uh, he just beat the Big Ten champion. Um, and he did it and decided in, in pretty dominant fashion. He got four four takedowns in the match and uh, the riding time point. So it just looked amazing. So happy for Nick. Nick got upset in the second round, came all the way back through. Uh, I think he won four or five matches to now now be in, in a position to finish. He's going to finish in the top six at least, and hopefully we can come back and take third. Um, he's got his work cut out for him tomorrow. He's got the Big Ten runner-up now uh, tomorrow. So he just beat the three seed. Now I'll have the four seed in the morning. So. Um, but really just so proud of the way he was able to come back through and keep his head on straight because it hurt it hurt yesterday he was in a rough spot this morning and and um, he, the, the big match of the day for him was beating Palacio who's the ninth seed from Cornell who's a total stud and a crazy shootout match it was like 10-9 or something crazy like that so um, that that then sparked him to what he was able to do tonight win two two more so just really proud of Nick um, then we'll go, well, let's cut back to Nick Herman. Nick Herman uh, wrestled his face off out here. He went two and two out here. Um, his first match, he lost a heartbreaker. Uh, it was a one-point match, crazy match with Ronnie Rios, who was the 10 seed from Oregon State, 6-5. Could have went either way. Comes back. Um, I forget who he even beat first now. Oh, he beat uh, Andrews from Northern Colorado in a crazy match where he ended up getting a cradle right at the end to win, just gutted it out. If anybody's watched Herman wrestle, you know how scrappy he is, and, and that's his gift. He's just so crafty, and he found a way to win that match. I mean, and then in the morning, he had two-time national champion Delgado from Illinois, two-time national champion, and uh, it was 0-0 in the first period. Great match, and uh, unfortunately, the, the Delgado from Illinois tore, I think, his hamstring. He got hurt, had the default, so we advanced after that. And I want to say, he, and obviously, you don't want to win with an injury default, but before that injury happened, Nick was competing like a banshee against a two-time national champion. He looked amazing, and obviously we wish that kid a quick recovery, and hopefully he's okay. Um, then the heartbreaker came the next round. He wrestled, he wrestled a kid from Michigan to get in the All-America round, and he lost in overtime, and it was uh, that was another shootout, crazy match. And um, So really, really impressed with Nick. If anybody's watched Nick's development this year, it's been pretty uh, impressive. It's meteoric, meteoric rise from where he was when he started to where he came to the end of the year. So... Pretty cool. Um, George D. Camillo, one of our stars, one of our brightest sh shining guys in the program in terms of the way he lives his life, his school, everything. I mean, he's just an aces kid. He made it to the All-American round by his highlight win was beating the five seed from Illinois. Amazing uh, match. He ended up winning in overtime. Uh, loses in the quarters to the guy who's now in the finals from Oklahoma and then comes all the way back in, in, um, in the All-American round. He's beaten. Uh, the, the number two guy, the guy ranked number two in the country the whole year, shot from Edinburgh, got upset. So he, they met in the, in the All-American round, in the blood round. And Georgie was winning and got cradled and pinned. He got caught and pinned in this kid's best move, which the kid's a freak. He's got an amazing cradle, and once he locked it up, it was bad. So, um, you know, but George, that's the second time. He's only a sophomore, and it's the second time in the All-American round. He's tasted it. He's getting better every time out. And right now, well, I'll get, I'll get to the point of that in a second, but 41, Joe Spisak, we say goodbye to, to a fifth year who uh, ended his career one and two at the national championship. He got a major decision, got some bonus points for us against the wrestler from Ryder, then got knocked out of the tournament by Thielke from Wisconsin. Um, you know, I'll talk more about Joe next week because it's too much to say in one, one interview, but uh, Andrew Atkinson came out fighting. Um, gosh, Andrew tried his best. I mean, he's just such a great kid, and um, but it's first time out. First time out here, you know, and he, he lost a, a, a close one first round, then he comes back, and the five seed who got upset, he ends up getting and losing by one point to the five seed, okay? So that's how tough Andrew is, and he's only a freshman. Um, then we obviously talked about Solzer and, and Blaze. Uh, this is the one. Blaze Butler, guys, is just, I mean, he, he's everything we want in our program. He's, he's um, so exciting. He loses second round, crazy matchup with Kid from Oklahoma State. Um, comes back, wins two matches, hard fought, looked amazing, makes it all the way back to the blood round of the All-American round and loses to Epperly from Virginia Tech, who he's beaten three times this year. Epperly wrestled an unbelievably crafty, smart match. Um, and, uh, yeah, he outsmarted us and, and we lost. And, you know, try not to get emotional here because Blaze is one of my 
all-time favorite guys, and um, I told him this. I said, Blaze, <clears throat> this year when things were really hurting for me, thing when things were really too almost too heavy to bear this year with the injuries and and and, and losing more than you and all these things that perceived failures, things that were just stressing me out, things that were really heavy burdens on my back, trials in my life. I, I have this prayer journal, and I, and I I was writing down in this prayer journal, don't ask why, ask who, what, and where. And that's what I told Blaze. I said, Blaze, when, when these things happen in your life that don't seem to make sense, when you're just completely broken, you ask who, who's in control? I believe God's in control. I believe he's sovereign, and he's good. And he's in control of the good and the bad. <clears throat> so if he's in control of this, then ultimately it's good. It's for our good, even though it hurts. What? What are we going to learn from? And that's the hardest part, is, is trying to figure out how we're stretched and, and where we're going to learn in the valley, because in the pits, typically when we learn the most. Um, and the where, where we're going, where we're going. I'm not going to get into detail on that one other than to say, uh, Blaze is going places. Where he's going, he's going places. And so instead of choosing to ask why, because I'm pretty broke mentally about it, I'm going to focus on the who, the what, and the where. And I'm going to, hopefully, he'll, I'm going to be praying that he does the same thing. Zach Nye came out here, uh, lost first round to the two seed, uh, came back in the first wrestle back and lost a ridiculous heartbreaker in 50 overtimes. Everybody knows Zach. He goes to overtime too much, and uh, he know he admitted that out loud. You know, I, I'll just say that the call was iffy at best. Um, he, I think he got a uh, bad situation, but uh, um, the bottom line is what we talked about today in, in, in the light of day was that we shouldn't even get there. We should make sure we get the takedown and regulation. Uh, or, or ride them and, and finish it off and we don't even have to worry about uh, being angry about something that we felt like should have been different. So, uh, But Zach's got another year and, he, and we think he's going to do amazing things next year. <clears throat> this, guys, I, I can't tell you how much of a roller coaster ride this tournament is. Um, if you haven't been out here, I encourage you to get out here because it's, uh, it's yeah, one of the craziest things you'll ever witness. But uh, hopefully I'll give you more tomorrow.